starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you join us today for our webinar on innovation partnerships with post-secondary institutions. Uh, my name is Susan Lowe. I'm with the Economic Development Division of the Ministry of Jobs, Trade and Technology, and I'll be moderating and providing some technical support for today's webinar. I'm located in Victoria, BC, in the traditional territories of the Likwungan speaking peoples, namely the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations. I'm privileged to be a guest here and to live, work, and play in these lands that they've stewarded for thousands of years. Before we get started with the presentation, I'll go over some technical issues. Um, there's two ways to connect to the webinar for audio. If you have a headset or a microphone and speakers on your computer, uh, you will probably want to choose computer audio. If you're concerned about the bandwidth or the computer audio has stopped working for you or isn't working for you, um, you can select phone call instead uh, on the audio window and it will give you a phone number an access code which gets you into this webinar and a pin number which is unique to you so don't share this with the others and that unique pin lets me mute or unmute your line if uh, we're doing question and answers later um, so we have a little bit of time if you need if your computer audio isn't working out well and you want to try that phone call we have just a little bit more time here while I introduce people and you can uh, pick up your phone and try dialing in um, please note that the audience is muted by default when you enter the webinar. Um, if you unmute your microphone from your end, then if I give you the mic, uh, you have to remember to unmute it from your end as well. Um, I'm sure that's clear as mud, but we'll make it work. Um, so the, a few other things with the, um, the GoToWebinar platform, the control panel is how you can interact with us during the webinar. Um, the orange my, there we go. The orange uh, arrow is how you can hide it or unhide it. Um, it will eventually hide itself automatically in a few minutes if you're not using, and uh, then you can use the orange arrow to unhide it. You can also go full screen if you want to see things really big, uh, and then uh, raise hands button. Although we're not going to be using the raise hands button. Uh, during the webinar because there are 65 of you and one of me and I can't ca promise that I will catch you in time or a reasonable amount of time. So if you want to ask a question about something technical or something the presenters are talking about, um, enter, a, uh, enter a question for staff in that enter a question for staff field and that way I can enter answer questions directly um, or queue them up for the Q&A periods. Um, we've got uh, five presenters and, and one technical DJ, that's me. So um, I, I do see some questions in, coming in and I will try to get to them as quickly as I can. Um, if you miss something and you want to watch it again later, the, re the webinar is being recorded. So um, it will be posted, it will actually be posted in about a week's time on our YouTube channel. Um, it just has to go through a layer of approvals first. Uh, so uh, be patient, you will get a link to the recording. So if you miss something, you can go back and watch it again and share it with your friends and family and watch it at Christmas dinner because I know you want to. Um, I have a quirky sense of humor and hopefully it won't get me in trouble. So, um, the presenters for today, we have, oh, and there's the ask the question. So um, today we're lucky to have a number of presenters and after I introduce each presenter, they'll give a wave uh, so you can see them in our Hollywood Squares display. We have Jamie Vandenbosch from Camosun College and uh, John Zimmerman from Ocean Rodeo Sports. Um, he's here for color commentary and he'll be talking a bit about his company's partnership with Camosun College. We have Rose Klukas from City of Campbell River and then we have the dynamic team of Randall Height and Naomi Tabata from North Island College. Hi! Um, so I am going to turn it over to Jamie to get us rolling and uh, then I will attend to the questions as they come in. Thank you for your patience. All right, you. Over to you, Jamie. Oh, I'm going to unmute you too as a bonus. There we go. <laughs> okay, Jamie. Okay, I'm just going to see here, show my screen. Can you see my PowerPoint yet? 
Yes, we can see it in uh, PowerPoint mode. There we go. You're rolling. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's an honor to be working here on the, uh, the traditional territory, territories of Lekungan and West Sandwich territories, which I've been working on for the last 12 years. And it's an honor and constantly inspired to be working on this cherished land. Um, I want to talk today about applied innovation as a driver of economic development. And um, next. Um, people, and I want to look at the whole idea of innovation. And innovation, a lot of people ask what that's an overused word. And I just uh, thought these definitions were good ones. Um, innovation is a problem solving, the lifelong desire to stay curious about why is in the world, not just creating something for the sake of being innovative. Also, uh, innovation can be a, uh, encourages connection and creativity, more probing, searching, where students are more invested in their, their outcomes of their education. And this is really where colleges, I think, uh, really play a role. Uh, situation in Canada for colleges, um, we know if you look at the Deloitte report, if people look into that, it's called the Age of Disruption, and they looked at rapid advances in technology and how it's affecting not only our industry in education, but uh, industries in, in general, and they surveyed a lot of businesses, 700 to be exact, and uh, as you can see, only 13 were prepared. So we see uh, colleges and universities playing a key role here in helping with innovation going forward. Um, just give you a, a look at Cross Canada. We have 5,633 partnerships and 693 social innovation partnerships as well. And we, we are uh, a growing concern with uh, over 100 institutions now across Canada uh, in colleges, teaching universities, and uh, polytechnics that are uh, doing applied research. Um, one, of the, one of the areas that uh, colleges are known for are technology access centers, which is a new um, type of innovation centers that were created uh, six years ago. And as you can see, only one in BC, but uh, there's 30 across Canada. So we have a national uh, presence in the applied research we do across Canada. Uh, the business innovation is over a thousand business innovations. 2.4 million square feet of innovation space and over 250 million worth of highly specialized equipment, which uh, tech, uh, industry and community partners can access across Canada. Situation in Victoria here, Camosun has 18,000 learners. We have programs ranging from uh, industrial trades, engineering, technology, arts and science, indigenous studies, and we have uh, economic impact of 1.2 billion. Oops. And we believe that uh, we create regional prosperity through our innovation skills training and education. Uh, what do we do? What is applied research? Many of you on, on here may not understand what applied research is um, from a college context, but I'm just gonna quickly say how we see it as a professionally managed application of expertise, technology, and best practices to solve industrial and social changes. We support the adoption of technologies and knowledge transfer, full spectrum of industry interactions and administration and project management of grants, as well as we, one of the important things is involving faculty and students in the involvement of applied research. Our, mo our model is evolving as we speak and uh, we're um, looking at also doing a lot of social development coming up in the near future and commercialization services. Uh, we're a little bit different from universities. We don't have IP. We are customer uh, demand driven. We're responsive to industry and um, we try our best to have our students uh, job ready entrepreneurial through the approaches of applied research with uh, industry partners. Uh, we see colleges as a catalyst and uh, like universities, uh, we, we take research and turn money into knowledge and we also I think our strength is taking the innovation and turning it into practical applications. Um, Camosun Innovates is uh, recognized as a leader in Canada and BC in applied research with over 150 industrial partners and clients. We were one of the first colleges in Canada to get a technology access center grant 
and uh, we also work with UBC UVic and we uh, we and also North Island College and we like to partner uh, when necessary. Uh, just quickly, some one example of a solution and a problem. VRX is a local company. They joined with the company uh, in Richmond. They created VROX sports simulators. They came to us because they couldn't uh, develop a project. We took a, a bobsled. We uh, 3D scanned it, then did a wood model, as you can see in the picture here. <clears throat> and then we um, actually ended up doing all the um, composite work and milling and created this uh, uh, first ever bobsled simulator, which is sitting in the Richmond Olympic uh, Museum in uh, Vancouver or Richmond, BC. <clears throat> We've also done for them, uh, for Toyota, Microsoft, they had a joint launch of a uh, Toyota Connects. And we actually, that system you see there, we designed and fabricated in our shop using our full-time staff of 12 people and our complement of students. Um, colleges stimulate economic develop development through practical innovation which I've said before, um, you can see here, we also, as a college, we actually get revenue for service. So we actually uh, not only do leverage research through grants, but we actually are doing uh, uh, fee for service and we actually contribute to economic, economic development. And that pie chart shows some of the kind of projects we work on. I'm just going to skip here. The regional economic development. Again, we see colleges and university, industry and government working together uh, to provide um, contributions to economic development. And I'm just going to go on here. We have a new innovation center um, called the Backpack um, Innovation Lab. And you can see here, this is a, a ideation space. We had a 50 foot wall that we painted with a uh, writable wall. And here is where we do our ideation. And the next picture here, you can see that same space being used for presentations of all the student projects. And in the background, you can see our technical equipment, some of which was used to do the bobsled and the um, pictures I showed you earlier. And thank you very much. And you can see my information here. Thank you. And I just realized I was muted. <laughs> there we go. Thanks very much, Jamie. Um, I I really want that whiteboard wall. I think I'm going to have to figure out a way to come out there and move my office out there. Uh, OK, um, we do have a bit of time for Q&A. I, uh, I don't have anything written in the, uh, in the questions box. But if anyone is on the call and wants to try raising their hand, I'm going to try spotting to see who has a raised hand. And then I can unmute you and you'll be able to ask your question. So that uh, raise hand button is on your control panel, which is going to appear at the top right of your screen, probably. And, uh, yeah. We also have uh, John Zimmerman, who is uh, one of the partners of um, Mosin College. And John, um, Thank you very much for, for bringing your time. I'm going to unmute you here, and then we can ask you about your experience uh, doing an innovation partnership. Jamie, you're muted now, so no talking for you. <laughs> uh, so John, hi. Hello. Hey there. Um, so tell me a little bit first about Ocean Rodeo Sports. Um, what does the business do? And then we'll get into the innovation partnership part. We've, uh, we've existed here on the South Island since 2001. Uh, we started as a kiteboarding brand, so we do all manner of activities are re related to getting on the water kiteboarding. Uh, kiteboarding, for those un unfamiliar, is very similar to windsurfing, but we use a kite instead of a sail. Uh, that led to us developing dry suits for use on the water as well, and so a very vibrant part of our business is dry suit sales, and those include sales not just to recreational sailors, kiteboarders, but also to the uh, we have governmental sales, search and rescue, first responder, uh, some tactical sales as well to police forces and military. Uh, and yeah, we've been partnered with the college, with specifically with with Camosun since uh, I believe it was 2014. 
We started uh, with the NSERC grant working with them. We've been delighted with the partnership with, with the college and access to the Babcock Center and Jamie's team at the, at the Technology Access Center there that they've got. So how did you first get connected with Camosun? How did you first uh, get connected with Melbourne? I actually attended a conference that was put on by Viatech for various forms of government um, funding or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, support from various levels of government. And uh, Rick Warner from NSERC got me in touch with the college uh, for a level one NSERC ARD grant. Uh, so it was a very low engagement. It was only about $30,000 uh, uh, funding that we used in order to do a level one ARD project for the college to develop or excuse me, to, to basically put the, the final touches upon a project that we've been working on for quite a while. And we actually have since uh, now extended that to a level two ARD, which is a three-year uh, commitment to the college. And that's a much, much more involved co uh, commitment on both sides. Great. Thank you. Um, so what do you see as, well, what, what are you doing with Camosun? I'm going to let you answer, and then I'm going to throw Jamie in here as well and unmute him so he can talk. Yeah, what, what Camosun delivers to us, and I think it speaks to the reason why I'm here, is that, you know, um, we've been able to channel funding that wouldn't otherwise be available to us through the college, so there's a nice ancillary benefit to the students that are exposed to what we're working on, seeing some real real world problems being solved while they're in the classroom uh, or working in the Babcock Center there. Uh, and what it's allowed us to do is two things that are really important to us. We're not a huge business, but we've actually doubled our staff since starting to work with the college. Uh, some of that is directly related, other, other of it's just kind of uh, unassociated, but we've been able to, to pick up some new employees from the college. We now have three of them that have come out of the, come out of the college's stream. Uh, so that's been fantastic because we've been able to introduce the, the, the student to the brand and to our business before they become an employee. Uh, but also what it's done is it allowed us to get a real sense of legitimacy within an industry that we're quite small. The industry itself is quite small. So, you know, the revenue that we produce isn't, doesn't justify the investment of something like what the Babcock Center represents. And so for us to have access to those types of cutting edge pieces of machinery and the wherewithal to operate them that comes with the college's uh, background has been fantastic for us, both in terms of credibility within the industry and also in terms of help, helping put us, you know, shoulders width above some of our competitors that are still, uh, you know, not able to do the testing regimens or uh, the rapid prototyping that we're able to do with Camosun. Cool. Hey, Jamie, um, how does this fit in with um, the, the academic programs at Camosun College? That's a good question. In the last couple of years, we've been focusing on how do we integrate back uh, into the education part of it. We, we've been spending in our first five or six years on the external, working with people like John and his companies to actually develop our expertise and get what we call street cred, where companies uh, Lake Ocean Rodeo uh, can see us as a viable uh, source of uh, innovation and technical services. Uh, and so the next, the last two years, we've been looking and working closely with our VP of Education to bring it back into the college and see how we can actually have more students getting access to these projects so that um, they have more experiential learning of what we've been calling at Camosun Applied Learning. So in the case of John, John, we've had, he said he's had some Camosun students that he's employed, and we've had one in, in particular that actually, uh, when we started the, along the road with John, we did an Engage grant, which is an insert grant, $25,000, with Ben, he was in his, between his first and second year of mechanical engineering technology, and then he did such a great job that uh, Ocean Rodeo says, hey, let's keep going. We got an, another grant, which is an ARD grant, and uh, we hired Ben when he graduated to work uh, with us and with Ocean Rodeo on uh, the next iteration of their innovation. Cool. Um, John, do you have any advice for uh, businesses, smaller businesses that I think this might be a, a viable option for them? Uh, uh, sure. I mean, the what I really like about the college is um, 
and this isn't a shot across the bow of universities at all, but universities are great in really high level um, white paper thinking, which I think applies quite well to medium size or larger businesses that have the affordability of time to, to kind of really take a deep dive. For a business our size, we need to see a road to commercialization quite quickly or we're not going to be interested in a product. Um, and that's just that's just the truth of the game. I mean, we've got to convert on our dollars that we spend. And so working with the college, and I'm not saying they're not capable of higher level research, but the hands-on, you know, get your hands dirty, break it and fix it kind of approach the college brings has been fantastic. And so, um, you know, if you're a business that is considering getting involved with research spending uh, or any type of government uh, assistance with your research, I would highly recommend the Technology Access Center route, and in particular working with Camosun, uh, just given the fact that they they get the job done, and you know we were able to say we need to get these parameters met, and we need to work towards this goal, and and it's it's worked out really well for us in terms of actually getting product to the market and be able to turn that into dollars in our back pocket to allow us to do more work with the college. Cool, uh, Jamie, do you want to add anything else? Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, I'm mute. Sorry. 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 I muted you because of the background. noise. You're self-muted, actually. You got to unmute yourself. <laughs> there yeah, we go. Thank you. No, I, uh, I have nothing to add, John. That was uh, well said. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, well, thanks for sharing that. Uh, that's that's the snapshot from locally. I actually uh, I want to get a, a sense and I want to engage some of our participants here. We have a lovely little poll thing here. I'm going to ask our attendees. There will be a uh, a poll that will pop up on your screen. Here we go. I'm going to launch it, and I want to get your your sense. Are you aware of any innovation partnerships in your community? So we're going to collect responses, and uh, this is a way of waking you up because I can I can tell if you are not watching and you're multitasking. So wake up. <laughs> so we've got some some uh, responses come in. We're 61% have voted. So uh, we'll give it a couple more minutes here. We don't we we can't chat back and forth on this platform, but I can use this poll to keep you uh, awake and get a sense for who's heard of these things. All right, I'm gonna give it uh, just a couple more seconds here. I'll let it be open for one minute. We got 10 more seconds. Let's see if we can get some more votes in. You can do this even if you're connected by the phone, by the way, just, just do it through your computer. Uh, alrighty, so I'm gonna close the poll and then this should Allow me to share the results. So we have 27% uh, are very familiar with one or more partnerships in their area. 46% have heard a little about something like this. And 27% are not aware of anything like this in their community. So that gives us a sense we have a, a pretty broad range of knowledge uh, among our attendees, and 84% of you voted. So that's pretty good. Uh, bees get degrees, we like to see that. So um, we'll go on next. We have uh, there a bit of Q&A time. So if anyone wants to throw in a, a question to Jamie and John about their experience at Camosun or Ocean River Sports, you do that by entering a message where it says enter or ask a question to staff. And it'll pop up for me. Um, I'm not getting anything yet, so I will move on, but I can come back to your question and ask it later. We'll have time at the end to ask those questions. Um, and if you're having uh, challenges as well, um, just use that thing and, and I'll try to get to you. So I'm going to change presenter now and we will have Rose from the city of Campbell River. Rose is an economic development officer with the city of Campbell River. and uh, I'm just going to do the right muting and unmuting and then hand over the screen so that Rose can share her presentation. Okay. So, alrighty, Rose. 
Thank you. And thank you for the province, to the province for this opportunity to present today. I am in the beautiful city of Campbell River on the traditional territory of the Wiwekum and the Hamako First Nations. Um, so today I am going to be speaking fairly, fairly generically, and I see I'm up ahead of slide, uh, about uh, economic development uh, at the community level and uh, applied research. So economic development professionals are tasked with staying current with best practices and this is sometimes challenging because uh, of the speed of change in in the economy and in impacts to the economy. So, uh, you know, we know that communities that are fortunate to have a strong relationship with their higher learning institutes like we have here in Campbell River, uh, we know how important those relationships and partnerships are and how important the partnerships are between the institutes and businesses and nonprofit uh, organizations. So I'm going to speak a little bit about that today. Right. And, Rose, just yeah. before you get going, we're not seeing your slides yet. Uh, we, oh. Yeah, I think we're still seeing the poll. So that thing that popped up, I can uh, I can set that send that to you again if you need it. Let me just, I'll try sending it to you again. And, uh, oh, here we go. I will hide the poll and change the presenter. There we go. That might have been my bad. Sorry, folks. Newbie on the controls. All right. Do you see it now? Got it. Good. So I won't repeat everything I said with slide one, but you can see the beautiful picture of Campbell River there. So hang on a second. All right. Can we see the slide? Yes, we can see the slide. Thank you. Very good. Okay. So I thought I'd start by talking about where Campbell River is. For those of you who have not had the good fortune of coming to our beautiful community, Campbell River is located on the east side of Vancouver Island, mid-island, and uh, it, is, it is a beautiful community. I encourage you to come and visit us if you haven't been here. So Campbell River has a strong history based in the resource sector, but has increasingly diversified its economy and I'm going to speak a bit more to that on the next slide. Um, I thought I would just give you a bit of reference for me from my office. It takes me 15 minutes to get to, to the airport which has several flights daily to Vancouver and uh, it's a half hour flight. Half an hour later by train I'm downtown and we are close to a number of other things like a great ski hill uh, at Mount Washington and we're within three hours of major universities and of course we have uh, our important uh, partnership with North Island College who you'll hear a bit more from later. Uh, again kind of talking to the local economy we have some very active sectors here in Campbell River uh, and you see them on the screen so I won't repeat that but like a lot of other BC communities Campbell River was hit hard with a mill closure several years ago and uh, that can have a big impact on a community but uh, what we've seen here is that uh, Campbell River has really rallied and taken the road of reinvention and uh, building on what are still some strong resource sectors such as forestry and aquaculture, uh, but also by supporting small business through uh, programs such as our Modern Entrepreneur Program, uh, because we recognize that uh, these are also strong contributors to our local economy and opportunities for partnerships with, uh, with for applied research partnerships. So one of the, hang on a second, one of our initiatives here in Campbell River is our CR Advantage, which is our municipal broadband network, kind of recognizing that some of the challenges that communities outside of large urban centers have is access to the infrastructure to support innovation. So we as a city uh, invested in a municipal broadband network. So we actually put the fiber in the ground and are able to offer high speed enterprise level, so equal upload and download uh, 
access to the internet to businesses that exist here in Campbell River and of course we're looking to draw business into Campbell River that require that kind of technology and today uh, um, most businesses require access to reliable and affordable internet access. So this is a big project for us and again we think that uh, we see it growing and supporting all kinds of innovation and research. So I thought I'd talk a little bit on today's topic on research partnerships and uh, you know we already heard from Jamie earlier about what uh, what applied research is so we know that it is an opportunity to solve a specific problem and here in Campbell River we have for example sectors that uh, that rely on Creative, creative solutions to problems and, and therefore rely on applied research partnerships. I'm not going to speak to too many examples of it because I know uh, Naomi and uh, Randall will be speaking to that when they come to their turn in this uh, presentation. But again, we know that partnerships with post-secondary uh, institutions allow this research to happen and, uh, and that drives innovation in a community. And I know it's a buzzword today, but it is a necessity for the survival of, of existing businesses and it's a necessity to grow new businesses in a community. Uh, I thought I'd give an example of what we see here on the ground in Campbell River. I wanted to talk about some projects. Again, I know that uh, NIC is going to talk about it a bit more, but we have some really cool and innovative uh, uh, businesses and, and entities here in Campbell River. For example, we have the BC Centre for Aquatic Health Sciences located in Campbell River, one of the country's leading aquatic research facilities. And I, I, we may hear more about that later, but we also have private businesses located here that have recognized the opportunity and the need for ongoing research to allow their own businesses to innovate and grow. And one example here is Poseidon Ocean Systems. Uh, so there are business here in Campbell River that uh, are committed to ongoing research to find solutions to some of the most challenging problems in, in this case in the aquaculture industry and what they're facing today with some cutting edge products. And so this is a business that has uh, understood the need to continue uh, uh, that commitment to research and development. So our goal in economic development is to create resilient communities. That would be the case for all my colleagues in this profession. And we know that partnerships with post-secondary institutions, like in our case, North Island College, they provide the solutions that the industry sectors face, and that definitely supports uh, resilience. We know that uh, it, it also supports workforce development through skills training initiatives by creating new approaches to, to education, especially continuing education opportunities. And workforce development is a challenge in many communities uh, in British Columbia and an area that needs more thought and development. And of course, it builds relationships uh, that promote a culture of innovation. And all these things contribute to a resilient community, uh, at, which is our goal here in Campbell River. So that's my presentation. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from NIC. Thanks very much, Rose. I, uh, I have an opportunity now to take questions. I know Naomi and uh, Randall are going to be joining us soon. I'll just uh, take controls back here so that I can so I can have control. We all know that's what I want. <laughs> uh, great. Oh, and sharing my webcam so I'm not just a, a disembodied voice. There we go. So um, I hope our, our, our attendees are getting this. We, we don't have too many uh, questions coming in at this point, but um, I wanted to, to just pause here. I have another poll lined up so we can get you guys engaged again. And this time I'll remember to, to take it off uh, the poll screen so we don't get interrupted going to our next thing. So here we go. I'm going to get you guys going again. I'm going to launch this poll. Here it comes. Coming at your screen. Oh, yeah, I can see all those all those little uh, not attentive flags coming off as people come out to the polls. <laughs> 
these questions are a little bit longer, and you can you can uh, select more than one answer on this poll. So take a bit of time to read. Here we go. We've got some votes coming in. So I was I'm just going to talk and talk in in the in the um interim here. I was lucky enough to visit the city of Campbell River a couple of years ago when the Association of Vancouver Island and Coastal Communities had the conference there. And uh, I was amused because of the number of coastal communities whose representatives stood up and named themselves uh, the capital, the BC capital of something to do with salmon. There was the BC uh, salmon fishing capital, the, uh, the home of the biggest salmon in BC. I think every community there had some kind of connection to salmon. Uh, so it was kind of funny to, to listen to people as they went around and definitely a lot of pride in that. So it's, it's a good reason why the, um, the aquaculture partnerships are a big part of the Campbell River community. All right, so we've been going uh, for a minute and 35 seconds on the, on the poll. We got 84% voted. I'm going to close this and share the results now so we can see where people are excited about. Uh, and now I can't actually see this. It is far too small on my screen. <laughs> uh, there we go. So 81%, uh, oh, 85% approach for developing and retaining the workforce. Uh, opportunity to attract or retain businesses. Uh, everybody wants to be put on the map, so the other three are, are fairly even, but there's a, a fair amount of interest in applied partnerships there. So great, this will be, uh, I believe it's part of the recording, so you'll, you'll get that at the end. And uh, without too much additional noise from me, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Naomi and to Randall here as I get caught up on my slides. Here we go. and. Uh, Unmute the right people. Okay, so now Naomi, I, I I believe I'm giving you the screen. And that would be great. Great. Okay, so coming at you live. So. Okay, Susan, can you see my screen? I can. Oh, good. Okay, so um, maybe stay on for a second and just make sure you can see. But Randall, you've got that. Yes, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Oh, good. We yes, can I can hear you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Randall Height. I'm Vice President of Strategic Initiatives here at North Island College. I'm actually at our Comox Valley campus right now. And um, one of my uh, teams, uh, one of my areas is the Center for Applied Research, Technology and Innovation. And uh, Naomi does an excellent job of running our team um, there. And she's at the Campbell River campus. Yes. So uh, NIC, we, we have about 9,000 uh, students in terms of um, headcount, about 2,400 uh, full-time equivalent students at the college. We've been around for about 43 years, and uh, this campus uh, picture that you see right here is our Comox Valley campus. So we're about uh, in the middle of Vancouver Island. Uh, many people say it kind of looks like a ski lodge, um, so it's a pretty great place to uh, to learn. As you can see here, we have campuses at the Comox Valley, so that's about the middle of the island there. Uh, in Campbell River, where Naomi is, which is about 45 minutes uh, drive north of the Comox Valley campus. We have another campus in Port Alberni, which is on the um, west coast, farther west coast, and in the Euclid area as well. And then we have a brand new campus up in Port Hardy, uh, which is kind of the top of the island, as you can see there. And then uh, we have a learning center, a small learning center in Euclid, which is just uh, right by Tofino and a great place to uh, vacation as well. Great. So I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction about CARDI, which um, is our Center for Applied Research Technology and Innovation. And Jamie's done a great job of talking about the context of applied research um, sort of across the country and and what applied research and innovation looks like. So I'm not going to jump too much into that or defining it, but I'll just let you know that here at North Island College, we do have a, um, a dedicated center for looking at partnerships around applied research technology and innovation opportunities to partner with local organizations and businesses. 
And this one I'm going to skip because I think Jamie's done a great job of that. And then because um, Rose is talking a bit about the, the context, Jamie and John have talked about, about what, what the benefits of applied research are. We thought we would just pepper you with, you with some examples of different types of applied research that happens um, here at NIC. And hopefully that will give you some, um, some, some ideas that you might be able to see applications in your own community. So as, as Rose has mentioned, Campbell River has a key um, economic driver is aquaculture. And in total, there are 6,600 jobs in aquaculture and one and a half billion dollars supporting the local economy. There's of course, finfish and shellfish. And we work with several companies. Um, and so what we'll do here is we'll give you an example of a few of those. Oh, Randall, I'm sorry. I thought that was your slide. That that's that last one's your slide. That's <laughs> okay. So here we go. Here, here we go into examples. So um, uh, a very recent example that we're, we've just wrapped up is a partnership with a local company on Denman Island. They are Han, Han Pacific Shellfish. And they were finding that those pesky crabs were eating up all their oyster seed and they were getting um, vast devastation of their crop as a result of the crab. So we went in, we had one of our faculty members and three students do some studies on different netting types that could be applied to their least area and see which offered the best protection from the crabs for their oyster seed. So that was an NSERC project similar to what Jamie and John talked about. It's the $25,000 grant um, that's very easy to access and really provides a good opportunity to develop a working relationship. And we've done quite a few of these small grants that have been um, really, really useful in terms of building a relationship and getting a, a, a single project um, out the door quickly and, and serving the needs of business and industry. Um, this is this is um, a picture of the of the whole team from that project. We have our faculty member in the pink shirt in the center. The owner and her daughter are there on the right, and our two of our students are pictured there on the left. And it's really a great opportunity um, because not only does the the funding support all the the participation of all these folks, but it does purport or the funding does support some of the materials that we purchased that's actually um, still on the farm today. So it's it's a win-win all around. Um, another example here, also in the aquaculture sector, is, is we had a local company in the Comox area that was very, very um, adamant that the, the location of eelgrass in, in the Comox estuary, and it's how close it is to their shellfish operation, directly impacted the sweetness in the flavor of the shellfish product. So they wanted to look at where does the eelgrass live and how could they plan future development or future plantings of their seed so that was in close proximity to the eelgrass and therefore benefited by gaining that sweet flavor. So um, we did this study and you can see in the picture that we have one of our instructors and two of our students who did GPS studies, um, surveys of the estuary to determine where the eelgrass was. And as a result, they created a map of the estuary and a plan for how the company should or could move forward in its future um, seedings of the area to maximize the sweetness of their product. And this is me again. Okay, so the, this project is um, more on the social side. So we have, um, as throughout, um, I was gonna say throughout the island, but even beyond that, there's a great interest in local food. And we had a, a great interest in looking at what are the barriers for produce or providing local food, but at an institutional level. Um, and this project started a few years back and we had support from our uh, our local regional district, the Comox Valley Regional District, as well as from the McConnell Foundation. And what we looked at was how could we enable institutions to buy local food? Was it a pricing barrier? Was it a, uh, or was there other kind of barrier that was getting in the way? And we had a really interesting two-year project that enabled, um, that looked at all the policy changes that would be, that would be required. And, and it really turned into be something quite unlike what we had originally envisioned, but really moved the conversation forward um, around social procurement policy on the island, local food um, procurement. And, and in fact, I think, um, this audience probably knows that in, in the recent um, um, government change, the new agriculture department is looking at a feed BC initiative. 
And it's interesting because this project, we called it Feed Comox Valley. So I, I personally think that's probably not a coincidence, but um, we're not, we can't quite make that jump um, yet. Uh, here we go. Oh, Randall. Uh, yeah, just before we get into this, uh, this example of how we work with the film industry, I just want to say basically that you know, we solve problems uh, for companies in the industry. And oftentimes we find when we talk to business owners that they have problems and they can't even think about solving some of them because they're too busy doing day-to-day -day operations. And one of the great things you can do through applied research is like Naomi said, it's quite easy to get an engaged grant. It gives us basically $25,000 from NSERC federal funding to look at, hey, do you have problems that we can solve through applied research? That's quite easy to get. And um, we can do all kinds of outside of the box things. We can work in collaboration with Jamie and others at Camosun College and other places. An example of that is uh, here from the film industry. So uh, just recently, actually, uh, the BC film and TV crew industry replaced Ontario as the largest uh, in Canada. And so we um, have some film and TV uh, movies that are being filmed and more and more Netflix and other things like that here on Vancouver Island. But as we talked with the industry, they had a real problem because there weren't basically simply trained crews here. So companies uh, didn't want to come here as much. They would come here for scenery and other things. They would get in and get out quickly, but it was expensive because they had to have their crews come here. So once they told us that, we were able to say, well, what if we train them here? And we were able to fill out a labor market partnership where we got federal and provincial funding to basically do the curriculum for a program in the film and TV crew industry. Um, it's uh, three, three billion uh, in BC, almost, uh, almost four and a half billion in Canada. We received about $500,000 through that program to create the curriculum and pilot delivery ones. Um, so we trained 137 uh, students uh, to be grips, set designers, uh, production assistants, and lighting technicians. They actually uh, worked with the instructor that's on the on the right there, and our instructors we actually used from industry. They were filming a TV show called Chesapeake Shores in the Parksville area, and while they were on a break in filming, they actually came and talked for, with us, and then they were able to take those students and the best of the class and able to hire them uh, right into jobs. And they actually, the students actually built some sets that will be featured in this uh, season three of that um, TV show. So we're very excited about that. Uh, the picture on the right is actually our president, John Bowman. We was featured in the 2016 version of McLean's Magazine for our work with First Nations. We serve 35 First Nations, uh, not only on uh, Vancouver Island, but also on the West Coast coast on the mainland there, Bella Bella, Bella Cool area, uh, area. and uh, we're very happy to do that and, and to be recognized for our work with First Nations. And, and this project in particular, we had some of our faculty in the Port Hardy area work with, with some of the Kwakwakawak elders, and they explored leadership concepts that existed in the language and how that related to um, developing leadership concepts amongst youth. So a really neat project, really hands-on, really applied, and that was funded by SHRC, which is another federal funding agency, um, to, the, to about the same amount as some of the previous projects. That's also a $25,000 project. The SHRC deals more with the social aspects, and there's also one that deals with health aspects too. So we can, um, from the science, from the health, or from the social aspect, uh, get federal funding. Um, your local institution may be able to do that as well, and then be able to make big differences. Obviously, First Nations, in this case, um, their language is disappearing uh, with their elders. And so we wanted to do with this and some other projects that we're working on ways to not only capture uh, that First Nation language, but to pass it on to uh, other generations. And then we also have a number of technology specific projects. So this one is a bit of an intersection. It was a technology project but it was to be applied in an aquaculture setting. And what we had was we had some sensors that were going to be um, raised and lowered in an automatic system um, into the water to do water quality monitoring at a variety of aquaculture um, sites. And what we wanted to do was to develop a system that would stream the data to the cloud for real time access, regardless of whether we had cell service or not. So these two students that you see in the picture and their instructor worked to develop the sensors 
um, well, well, they bought the sensors, but they worked to develop the software that would link the sensor to a communications protocol. And they ended up building out the control boards, building out the communications um, technology and software to enable that to happen. And, and both of these students have been now hired as a result of their, um, of the work on this project. We've also worked with the shellfish sector recently. So for example, the BC Center for Aquatic Health Sciences. And uh, if you like oysters, you've probably heard of Fannie Bay oysters. This was an example of recently of an industry problem. Uh, they harvest oysters every year and sometimes they don't find out that there's issues with them until there's a, a reported case of norovirus. Part of the problem with that is, is it might just be someone getting the flu or some other issue outside and it might not even be related to the oysters at all, but sometimes it takes the market and causes them to basically throw away um, all of the oysters that they've harvested in the market. It also causes problems with them in terms of um, you know, their brand and people being worried that it's not safe and other things like that. So we uh, received an NSERC grant, thanks to some great work by Naomi, to be able to develop an assay to test for norovirus to be able to find it and um, indicate it in oysters before they're harvested so that uh, they don't have to waste them. It is sort of like the flu in humans in that it might pass and perhaps uh, through ocean uh, movement and other things like that, that the uh, oysters can be harvested at another time and be used. So this is an example of us working with them. Uh, we recently completed this project and it could be a quantum leap for the industry and just another example of how we can solve industry problems. Yeah, and I think for, for the industry, the main outcome here is that um, the new assay developed is, is um, not a quantitative assay like they have at the federal government labs, but it is a good screening tool and it can be delivered at one tenth of the cost of the existing tool. So oyster growers who tend to be smaller companies, who tend to be, um, you know, either mom and pop operations or either very small staff, they can now afford to do some screening before they send their product out to market. Okay, and that's that's the key examples that we wanted to give to you today. Um, I think um, it's really important to note that you've kind of had a bit of an island perspective here, but it, it's really important that all community colleges in BC, or almost all of them, have some kind of applied research or innovation program, and almost all colleges are eligible to apply for these insert grants that we're talking about. So they're very um, easy to access entry level grants that, that um, a, a company in your community might benefit from. And certainly, um, Jamie or I could link you with, with uh, folks at, at a community college near you who could help with that, or we could help you in some way as well. Um, but feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions. I also want to add that we're also looking at renewable energy projects uh, in the future for CARDI. Um, we're looking at solar, uh, wind, and also marine renewable energy. So I will be at the conference uh, coming up in Vancouver next week on that. So please come up and say hi if you're interested in working uh, on anything with us. We have worked with some companies who've had some preliminary talks with uh, Tesla and others, and we're hoping to uh, be doing quite big advancements in renew renewable energy, wind, um, tidal, and run of river in the next uh, few years. That's it for us, thanks. Our contact information is at the bottom. We'd love to work with you. That is awesome. Thanks very much, Naomi and Randall. I will, uh, I'm going to take back, uh, people want to write down those email addresses really quick and then I will take back the screen. Um, you can also contact me later through the economic development at gov.bc.ca email uh, if you want to get a hold of, of any of our presenters today. Um, here we go, just switching things around. Okay, so we have uh, we have some Q and A time here. We've got about 20 minutes left in our um, webinar time. Of course, everyone loves when a meeting finishes early. Uh, I actually I have a couple of questions, and I'm going to unmute our our whole panel and let you guys fire away here about uh, about this one. But the question I have listening to this is, uh, and Jamie, you're self muted, so if you want to talk, you're going to have to do that yourself. Uh, question I have is. Uh, where do these ideas come from? How do these things get started? If, if Let's say I'm a local elected official. Um, 
<laughs> secret I am. Uh, say I'm a local elected official and I want to I want to take advantage of this opportunity to do something good for my community. Where should I get started? I, I can take that. I, I think the best place to come is, is come to the local college and have a conversation um, with somebody in a position like like Randall's or Jamie or myself. And, and we can start navigating what the next steps might be. So we, we'd connect you with a company that might have similar interests or a student or faculty member who might be able to help solve a problem. And then, and then we start looking at different opportunities to move forward. Great. Anyone else want to add anything there? We get ideas, uh, certainly from, like Naomi said, from elected officials. We get uh, from industry who maybe had problems for years and they can't even think about solving something. Um, and we can certainly help them do that. It basically allows you to get more, more staff uh, at no cost to you in some cases. Um, and, and faculty experts and students, the next generation. And you've heard from all of us that often they get hired and they can often are young and, and eager and, and, um, and could be your, your next employees. And we also hear um, internally from uh, faculty and from students and maybe they want to solve things or have seen things. And then we'll go out and look for companies that might have those issues as well. So we're always looking to partner people as well. And like Naomi said, you go to your college, even if you don't know who to talk to, tell them you're interested in doing some applied research and they should uh, have an idea who does that at your institution. Great. Now, I noticed that uh, in some of the projects that you talked about, it wasn't only, uh, it wasn't only gadgets and widgets that you were working on. There was uh, um, some social, social sector research as well. Uh, so if communities want to, um, you know, do some research into a particular aspect of their economy, is that something, uh, you know, is, is a, an innovation partnership like this something that a community could use to add capacity to their economic development function? Anyone? <laughs> Uh, Jamie, do you want to take a stab at that, or do you want me to go? I... You can go ahead. <laughs> You're allowed okay, to well, know this social... is good for that. <laughs> no, it, it is. Um, there's there's lots of sort of economic development and, and social change aspects that we can deliver via research. There's so many variables, though, in that realm, including the funding opportunities. So you, you saw a lot of widgets and you saw a lot of science examples because that is where it's really easy to touch base and to, and to seek funding. The, um, the social science side, it's not impossible, then there's certainly lots of funding opportunities, um, but it's not the same model necessarily. No one else wants to add anything? So, um, I, I'm oh. was cutting out for me, so I'm not sure if, uh, I didn't quite hear, so I'm not sure if, if all of you uh, did. There are a few parameters. Uh, usually it has to be a company with more than two employees. They have to be in business for at least a couple of years uh, for us to be able to do that. But there, you know, if you're not sure at all, certainly come and talk with any one of us and, and we can help you with that. Great. And nonprofits can apply for these as well, right? Yes, nonprofits are eligible for the social science side of the um, research grants, yes. Okay. So I'm gonna add something there. The Recently, the social sciences under SHRC uh, put out a college pilot project and it's been going on for a couple of years now. And uh, that was rolled recently into under the NSERC umbrella, which is under the CCI program, uh, Community Colleges uh, Innovation Program. And um, there was recently in the last budget, there was $10 million and there was a competition and there was over 83 applications. And those applications in that particular situation, uh, they can be nonprofits and they have a different criteria than the NSERC uh, engineering uh, sciences uh, criteria. Okay, thanks. Well, um, I have a few kudos and compliments coming in on the questions, but that that's not what we're really here for. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm just going to hand it over to the audience one more time. If anyone wants to, uh, to verbally ask a question, instead of having to, to type it in, um, if you want to use that raise hand button on your, uh, your screen, I'm going to give this a couple more minutes and then I will let you all go and have your lunch because uh, I'm sure there's some hungry people. Um, I'm not seeing anything come in, so uh, what I'll do is I will... Um, 
I'm going to say thank you to all of our presenters and uh, Jamie, John, Rose, Randall, and Naomi. Thank you very much for being part of uh, the webinar today, which, as some of the uh, attendees will know, is is my first time uh, doing one of these economic development webinars. So nothing crashed. So yay! Uh, the next webinar that's coming up, March 22nd, is uh, same lunch hour. Bring your bring your bag lunch. Uh, the BC Ideas Exchange is a collection of uh, success stories from across BC, and we'll be hearing from Port Moody, uh, the city manager of Port Moody, talking about their Brewers Row initiative, as well as the Fields Forward initiative in Creston. Uh, Kristen Valley has their mobile fruit press um, that they are taking around to farms, um, and I'm not going to give away the, the answer. So the registration link is a nice, I've shortened it for you, it's there on your screen, bit.ly slash mar22webinar. Um, it'll also be coming out, uh, you'll probably get an email later this afternoon with your invitation to it as well. And uh, so another thing that you might want to take advantage of in, in your communities is we are launching a Tech Dev 101 workshops, and uh, these introduce tech and innovation basics to a community. Um, they are aimed at sort of the whole ecosystem, so local government staff and elected officials, community economic development officers, uh, chambers of commerce, community futures, the whole ecosystem of economic development. Uh, we're trying to get everyone in a room in a community to talk about the tech sector in your community, your assets, what opportunities you have, and how to use tech and innovation as an economic development driver. So we have four of those already scheduled. We're going to Port Alberni, uh, we're going to Campbell River, and uh, we'll also be in Kimberley and Castlegar uh, sometime in the next month. And we have, um, I think, I believe we're looking for 12 more communities to do that. All you have to do is find us a venue. We will bring the presenters, the materials, um, and hopefully you'll help us invite the, the important people in your community to that. So email economicdevelopment at gov.bc.ca if you want to request that workshop in your community. And um, yeah, after this webinar, there will be a feedback survey that comes up. As I mentioned, this was my first in this series, and so I would really love to hear what you think. Uh, if there's anything we can improve upon or any other topics that you'd like to see coming up, uh, we're, we're now booking topics into the fall. We're going to take a summer break, but I have a, a big lineup of topics that I'm very excited about. Um, this recording will be posted in approximately a week. Um, there will be a link on gov.bc.ca slash economic development. Um, it just has to get through all of the screening. It's the government, right? Uh, and don't forget to register for that next webinar, which I will try to go back and give you the link again. There we go. There's the link to that uh, bit.ly slash mar22 webinar. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining us. And I'm going to end the webinar. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Oh, now I have to find the button to end the webinar. All right, end webinar. Here we go. Bye, everyone.